Hi there and welcome back to the children of Atlantis, dear friends of the stars. We're going to modify our people now that we are masters of the genetic uh, manipulation. And to do that, we have started the Operation Super Beings. All of our people that are like above 50 in some of their templates will get an update. So for now, we'll have the Child of Atlantis, we'll have the Deros, and soon we may add some Astani. I mean, of course, we have the synthetics too, but they cannot be manipulated, right? So, uh, Let's create another template. Ah, not apply. Create another template. Mm. So, <laughs> a typical materialist faction, we could name ourselves the Children of Atlantis 3. We go 3.0. There we go. So what we can do now is we can also remove beneficial picks like that. Natural engineers, weak, fleeting. Let's just remove everything so we can see what we have left. And we want to make us, of course, more erudite. That's the thing about the children of Atlantis. They want to be erudites. Then let's see what supports this. I mean, robust would be perfectly nice for them to fertile why not unity output also goes up but uh, being a natural engineer would be pretty good still we don't need adaptability it's just not needed for us talented would be an option let's see we have trade points left five one of these super picks. <laughs> we could make ourselves delicious. Please not. Um, robust is definitely a thing. Leader lifespan plus 50 years. But we're not so much for our leaders. We have synthetics for the time being. Let's see what we can get for fertile. We get pop growth speed plus 30%. Okay, that's... We don't really need it, but it's okay. We'll have unity output plus 10%. Mm, that is one point here. Then we have other species owner happiness plus 10%. Um, that would be, let's see, mm, yeah, other species. That would be something like the charismatic effect. It's okay. And happiness plus 5% is, yeah, another point. So this is like packed for it's a little bit better than investing four points singularly and it leaves you trade picks so it's definitely good look at that rapid breeders only has 20 percent, so that would be fertile robust is pretty good but we don't need habitability it's useless pop resource production is kind of good is kind of good five percent Definitely is kind of good. <sighs> Good might make them charismatic too. Would be something. Pop resource production. Yeah, I mean, um, the thing is, can we choose fertile and traditional? Something like that. Because we have unity output plus 10% there. And would you have unity output plus 20%? That is in incredible, I, I guess. Let's see. I mean, strong is not something we would go for. Conservation is maybe. Mm. This would bring us to a point where we... Um, yeah, we have two trade picks left then. <laughs> Two trade picks left. I mean, we could choose something really bad here. But what would that be? Probably only repugnant. It's not adaptive we could choose. 
Then we have three trade points left. We could make ourselves delicious. We could make robust. If we remove that, I'm not adaptive, but we cannot go for robust then. Ha! Ah. <laughs> it's a tricky thing. I mean, we want to become masters of research. Is that possible? At least masters of engineering we will become. Leader level cap has been raised by one already. And maybe we should specialize another people in uh, in unity. Maybe we should do that and we would, should go for another leader level here. So they're kind of good at unity output. They're even better leaders. That would probably make sense. Because let's see. Um, yeah, on the other hand, that is populating, right? So we don't need to have... On the other hand, they are the leaders. They are the leaders at the moment. So... They could become talented right now. We have another trait pick left. Could choose something really bad, but that wouldn't make sense, right? Hmm. I mean, we could look if there's something that costs two. That would add into that. I mean, intelligent isn't good at, at that. We'd have industrious, thrifty, or agrarian. That is, all of that is not good. Conformists might be okay. But what would we choose then? Maybe sedentary. Or weak. Weak is definitely okay. We don't need them to, to produce minerals. So we would go for weak. Then we can make them conformists. It is, it is definitely good that the ruling elite is true to our values. And they belong to the ruling elite. So that's the children of Atlantis. Their new template. Welcome here. Now let's apply the template all the people we have 25,000 wow <laughs> but we have engineered evolution and evolutionary mastery so situation log updated let's go let's modify ourselves and now to the next thing the diogenes habitat is searching for something and what would we need at the moment we need tons of minerals so that's definitely a thing. I mean, first, we want the usual stuff here. That the gene clinic, the, the paradise dome, and the leisure district. And then we might build, as we need so much minerals, so many minerals, we need the astro mining base here. Let's build some pops. We have the very good minor synthetic three. And yeah, we want to build multiple of the minor synthetic three. Here we go. The rest of the people will come to the habitat. And then we'll see what we need there. Then we also have a war going on, as you can, of course, see. But that war is <laughs> very much decided already. Now we still would need to go of war has been announced. to that part of the galaxy. What the Sutherian Chroniclers Declared on the Elder Things Consciousness. 
They are overwhelming, but the elder things are also overwhelming. They are the keepers of knowledge. Not that overwhelming because... Ah, okay. Well, that is definitely good for us. The elder things consciousness has been... Um, a terrible threat that was growing all the time. Let's see. There are the Sutherian Chroniclers and the Elder Things are here. I mean, we have beaten them, but it was kind of close. So we'll see what comes of that. It seems like the Fallen Empires slowly awaken. Leader F19 is doing what he can. A species modification. Plasma cannons are coming too. Great times are nearing. For our good. Estefania Vasquez. Neptune habitat still building. Yeah, the last of the minor synthetics here. We want to up the speed. Give us more speed. <laughs> yeah, we need more uh, more fleet among all the things. It's kind of I'm kind of split through this because we also want more citadels and stuff, and maybe these first would be good. We'll see. We're upgrading the stations. It's not like we're not doing that. Definitely doing that, especially the shipyard stations are very important. Hmm. Of course, we're saving up for another orbital, but Research maybe there's something in between. And plasma cannons. The latest in plasma weaponry, these cannons are fully militarized versions of the older, somewhat improvised plasma throwers. Their plasma projectiles are even deadlier. Will the Operation Super Beam progress? How is it going? It's going well, probably. Uh, and now, we could go for that. Mm, no. Um, what would be the next thing to go for? I mean, we have a particle expert. So Archimeters would be something. Or neutron launchers. I love the I love the Archimeters. We have Titans now, so let's see. They're also in the research agreement of the Ibians, so power to us, more power to us. Powerful weapons that launch a lightning arc of chaotic energy at a target, bypassing shields and armor. Good things are coming. And the war will be won by our friends. I mean, look at that. <laughs> There's everything done. And they, they just need to fly over here to the foundation of Trognar. Take that too, and then... Thing is done. Neptune habitat. Pop construction ready. Complete. Neptune habitat is full and a powerhouse. Not as much as a planet, of course, but it is good. It is good. Also, Mars is being uh, terraformed. Can we see that somewhere in the menu? Yes, very soon we'll have Mars back. Very cool. Hmm, what to go for next? Um... Probably here we could do something. Let's have a look at Alpha Centauri Station. Yeah, that's already pretty pretty nice. We could have more of the defense platforms, but we already have a lot of defense platforms. Let's add an iron cannon here. For Valion Station, we also have an iron cannon added for now. We could upgrade the Plato Station. Look at that. It's a Star Fortress. We could upgrade it to a Star Fortress. Defense Grid Supercomputer we have here. 
Um, yeah, we're, we're going to go for the stations now, not so much for trading anymore, but really for damage. For So we, we'd like the target uplink computer. And then some modules would be nice. We have a missile battery and a hangar bay. Let's add a gun battery and maybe, I don't know, another hangar bay. I love hangar bays. The brink station. And then we can upgrade it. I think that's cool. Yeah, the Heracles fleet also could be um, a little bit expanded. Where is it? It's in Favellion. Yeah, let's reinforce the fleet. We really have the minerals right now, so we should use them to do all this. Star spawn also. going on here everything is fine here too Shogna and Ebi look yeah I'm, I mean we, we probably just have to wait we can already go for the status quo which would be triumphant. I mean, the hero principality is uh, all but surviving. Or oh, it's it's not surviving, rather. Ah, and we are the leader of the Federation right now, which means we have control of the fleet again. Where are we? In Dorkan. And we have... 7th Star Order, which is here. They are traveling through the hyperlane to Fargis. I don't know. And we have that. these two, two fleets. Bintu system. I don't know. Let's probably send them here and then take over what we can. This thing is an FTL. It's moving here to Dorkan and then... What does it do there? We have 40,000 here. Do we really need another 23,000? No. We'll fly here. Band Donag could, could be here. The Star Spawn of Cthulhu Blessed Order completes the Colossus Project. Word has reached us that the Star Spawn of Cthulhu Blessed Order has developed specifications for a Colossus type hull configuration, a weapon platform potentially capable of complete planetary destruction. Suddenly, a contender! Are they good? They are terribly good, but their fleet power is inferior to us due to a war against. The Mi Galactic Migo and the Gnori. And the Gnori, how, how are they doing? Everyone's losing uh, fleet power here. Could be the perfect time for a crisis to start. A 5x crisis. <laughs> Five times the strength it has. Research concluded. Improved battleship hulls, finally. That is pretty good. I love these upgrades. Advances in building techniques allow for the construction of sturdier and more durable battleships. Ah. <laughs> and now, advanced Titan hulls. Advanced battleship hulls. I love these. Um, yeah, I mean, they are rare, and we love the rares. <laughs> and we have Bskul in charge, who is good at void craft, so... Let's maybe first go for the battleship hulls. Should be cool. Should be cool. So how is our project going? Very soon, in five months, and ooh, what is that? The Infinity 
equation as the seventh star order approaches the gargantua black hole they find that they are not alone oh at the edge of the event horizon it soars reflecting light from the stars being drawn into the dark gaping hole a gigantic construction in the shape of a perfect sphere. We cannot pick up any signals from it, nor does anything we send make it respond. It simply sits at the edge of the abyss, waiting. Situation Interesting. The technosphere. It's silent for now. Will it stay so? Forever. Forever, ever. It looks like an eye, right? An eye. And we... It's like a mirror in, in space. A dark mirror. Well, thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other in the next episode when we further improve ourselves and of course the galaxy have a great time until then and happy gaming